What's going on guys? Welcome to the weekly technicals live session for September 2nd, 2018. And for those of you that are attending live, just go ahead and uh, post a one in the chat box so I know that this is all working correctly and you guys can hear me and also see my screen. So uh, going forward into this week, we're going to start off the uh, live session here with looking at the economic calendar and the upcoming news releases for the week. So to start it off, <clears throat> to start it off, we have a uh, Japanese yen high impact news release tonight at 1040. And we also have Australian dollar uh, 630 p.m. tonight during Asia session. So those are two uh, pairs that we could be watching. However, I don't really want to be trading too much um, <clears throat> until after Monday because Monday we do have a U.S. bank holiday, so it is Labor Day weekend. Uh, a lot of people are still, you know, finishing up their vacation or, um, you know, they're taking a trip or, or whatever it may be for Labor Day weekend. So uh, we have to take that into account uh, going into this week. So for me... Uh, personally, I want to be looking to trade uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, so typical week for me. Uh, you guys know that you know mainly I like to trade on those three days uh, out of the week. Uh, however, the past two weeks we have seen um, very high probability setups line up on Monday. Uh, this week I don't think that's going to be the case since we do have the bank holiday. So uh, what I'm really going to be focused on is again Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, primarily I like to focus on London session uh, for GBP and Euro. So uh, we do have a bit of uh, GBP medium impact news here for London session on Tuesday and then New York session we've got another GBP news uh, followed by a dollar index news uh, for New York session as well at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, then moving into Wednesday, we also have, we got a lot of Canadian dollar news on New York session. So dollar CAD, watch for a potential setup there on Wednesday. Um, but we do have GBP high impact news, 1.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday. So um, ideally, I'd be looking for uh, GBP to have some sort of a setup Tuesday London session or Wednesday London session for us. And, uh, and then uh, looking a little bit further into Thursday, uh, we do have you know, uh, NFP this Friday. So we do have to be very cautious of that. We're not going to be trading on Friday. Uh, if we can, I'd like to have all trading wrapped up by Tuesday, Wednesday this week. And uh, so primarily, I'm only going to be focused on trading again Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Ideally, though, I'd like to be finished trading after Wednesday uh, because typically the day before F NFP, they like to either consolidate or they'll have some sort of a manip manipulation. Um, and that doesn't mean there, there won't be a trade there. But uh, in terms of me and my trading style, I would just for, for minimal risk and most high probability setups, I would look for a... Uh, a nice little day trade between Tuesday and Wednesday this week. Uh, so that's what we've got for the news, uh, upcoming news releases for this week. So stay out Friday, stay out Monday, focus your uh, sights on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for this week. Uh, and for me, I'll primarily, again, be focused during London session uh, on GBP USD and Euro USD uh, for uh, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday trading days. So let's hop over to the charts now and we will go ahead and uh, break down these pairs and talk about what I see unfolding for the week. So uh, we will get started here with dollar index and we'll start with the daily chart uh, just as we normally do. And uh, looking forward into the week, I, I actually really like, like the price action we've seen on Thursday and Friday. So uh, I think we're going to get continued weakness for dollar index. So I'd like to see dollar index turn around, find some resistance, and uh, and start heading lower. Now, in terms of target objectives, my first target will be this 95.15 level, which is uh, the body of this candle here. And, uh, and there's a lot of liquidity because it's relatively equal lows in this area. So I'd like to see the market trade below there and uh, ultimately targeting the 94 big figure down to 93.80 to clear out this liquidity. And a little bit longer term, our sights are still set on these equal lows back here, uh, ranging from the levels of 93.45 down to 93.20. Uh, so I added these levels on my charts this morning. You guys may want to do the same. Uh, so basically, I've just got the body of this candle, the body and the low of this candle, and the body and the low of this candle as well. 
Uh, so that's pretty much the liquidity below the market and where I would expect them to trade to um, here in the near future. So going forward, if we do get back above 95.40, which is the 50% level of this ICT bearish shoulder block, we have to anticipate a potential run on the 95.80 high. Okay, and if, and if that's the case, we could get a, a little bit further retracement back up into uh, these candles here, which is an ICT bearish shoulder block. So I'm not going to put the level on my chart, which would come in at about 96 big figure to 96.20. I'm not going to actually put those on my chart yet because we're still below the 95.40. And if this trend still remains bearish, in my opinion, it should stay below 95.40. Uh, so this week, I'd like to see the high of the week either form. So two things, really. I'd like to see them immediately open up and start trading lower because if you look what we did on Friday, we, we reacted off of the 50% level of this ICT bullish order block and we traded right back into the bearish order block here. You can see how the market poked its head through it, so it formed a little wick, but then ultimately it closed below that. So that still, to me, sign uh, signifies weakness. So if I had to you know, take a guess, I would say that um, dollar index would definitely remain bearish this week and we should see lower prices. Uh, as long as we stay below 95.40, that should definitely be the case. So uh, what I would recommend you guys do is have the 95.40 level, have the 95.20 level, and also the levels below the market. Because if anything, uh, we should definitely find some resistance at 95.40. So I don't know if 95.40 will be enough to take us all the way below 93.20. Uh, it definitely can be, can be based on the trend that, and, the, and the price action we've got so far. So, you know, I, I would highly recommend keeping the 95.40 and 95.20 level on your chart because I think that in terms of uh, high of the week scenario, we should see the market form some sort of topping formation, uh, whether that be here at 95.20 or up here at 95.40. So uh, keep that in mind uh, going forward into this week because... I think we should see another round of selling on dollar index. Uh, it's very typical of the market to have a slight pullback or retracement um, at the end of the week. And you can see a perfect example of that here. So we had a nice bearish trend for the week. And uh, ultimately Thursday and Friday, we find a little bit of support at a level uh, previously marked out, which is the 50% of this two down candles, which is an ICT bear, uh, bullish order block. And you can see we find support and we push right back up into the resistance level there. So uh, just to simplify it again, uh, we are going to be looking for weakness and in dollar index this week. And we'd like to see 95.40 hold as resistance. Um, and if we don't push up there, we want to see 95.20 hold as resistance as well. So uh, let's go ahead and we will move into euro dollar now. And if you guys look at this, I mean, it is a beautiful uh, formation of price. I mean, it, it's completely, uh, let's just go ahead and compare the two side by side so you guys can have a, a very accurate look at this. But basically, you know, when you're looking at dollar index, you're looking at the foreign currency to look, you know, completely opposite of, of the pair that you're trading, right? And uh, here on the left, we have dollar index. And here on the right, we have euro dollar. So if you look at the two, I mean, they are almost perfectly symmetrical. So these two pairs are inversely symmetrical. Um, and I don't know if that's the right term. But basically what I mean is they, they don't move in the same direction. They move opposite of each other. So you can see here, dollar index, we've got an ICT bearish shoulder block. And inversely over here on euro dollar, we've got an ICT bullish order block. So we've got the 50% level marked out and the high marked out. And then here we've got the low and the 50% level marked out. Do you guys see how inverse, how inversely correlated these two pairs are? So when you see dollar index trading into resistance and you see euro dollar trading into support, that would support the idea that these two pairs are in sync with one another, correct? So let's jump back. We're going to move back over to Euro Dollar. I just wanted to pull both up so you guys could see how clear they are when you look at the two together. Okay, so now looking at this, we're going to expect the 
opposite of what we would see with dollar index. So we want to see this market find support, whether that be here at the high, which is at 1.16 big figure, or do we trade back down to the low, which comes in at 15.65? I'm sorry, not the low, the 50% uh, level of the bullish order block. If we trade down to that, then that should hold us support as well. If we break below this 1565, then we have to assume they're going to run the liquidity below here at 1530 and then take it back down here into 14 big figure. Now, I'm not going to keep those levels on my chart right now because, again, we are above the 50% level. I would assume that they're going to hold this as support. Now, if we get into Tuesday or something like that and we've already traded below here, then we'll have to adjust the levels on our, on our chart and we'll talk about that in the daily technicals live session. Uh, that we host every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So going forward into this week, I would like to see the low of the week or you know the uh, support for the week come in at either 1565 or right here at 16 big figure. Now last week we were targeting 1750, right? All this liquidity above here. Notice how we were we were very aggressive when we were pushing up there, but we stopped just shy of it about at about 1730. So in my opinion, they've got a lot of retail traders trapped short right now. They've got a lot of guys thinking that this pair is going to continue lower, that it's holding resistance, all that. I see this as an ICT bullish order block, which is support. And I would assume from here they're going to take this market higher, whether that be this level or whether that be this level, they're going to send this market back above 1750. Okay, that makes the most sense. If you think about all the retail traders, everybody that sold this market, yes, they have made money. Their stop losses are resting here or here. You got to think about the guys that sold it on this move down. All their stops are built up above here. So as the market's trading lower, they're thinking, oh, okay, we're right, we're right. It's holding as resistance. No, it's within support. It traded within support Thursday, Friday. Makes sense for the market to have a solid retracement or a pullback. We trade right down into a higher time frame support. Expect bullish, uh, a bullish week on euro dollar. Okay, so uh, that's why I am expecting that. And now again, have the 1565, have the 16 big figure, and have the 1750 levels on your chart because those are the three key levels that we're going to be watching for this week. We want to see the low form at 16 big figure or 1565. And then we want to see the market trade above aggressively. We want to see very big bullish candles like we've seen here heading above the 1750 uh, level. Okay. So that's what we're going to be looking at for uh, Euro dollar. Now, if we look at GBP USD, otherwise known as cable, uh, this pair here found a little bit of resistance. Uh, again, just like all the other pairs, Thursday and Friday. And we have since traded lower. So we've got the retail traders trapped short. Um, but if you look left, we do have an ICT bullish order block here. So this down candle before this aggressive move up is an ICT bullish order block. So this down candle is also an ICT bullish order block. Uh, I'm just going to use this one because it's a bigger body candle. So if it's a bigger body candle, there's typically a lot more volume within the candle. What, it, what that means is the big institutions and the big uh, people who have, have a lot of money that they're dumping into the market, they can't buy as the market's pushing up. That's retail traders that are buying as the market's pushing up because they're uninformed and they don't understand. So if we look at this down candle, this will actually become or, or be a better support because of the fact that the big institutions and the big banks, they can only buy as the market's moving down. So as the market's moving down, they're buying it. And you know that because you see the big move up after. That's basically them showing you what they're doing. So whenever they have this move, we don't have to get in on that move. We can wait for them to trade back into the key level, which is the down move before the up move, otherwise known as an ICT bullish order block. So think about this in terms of, um, in simple terms, just think about it. So the market's pushing down. If the big institutions can't buy as it's pushing up, what do you think they're doing as it's pushing down right now? They're buying more of it. Where would be a logical level for them to stop buying it at? This ICT bullish order block. Why would they stop buying it there? Because it's support. 
Okay, so what would we expect from GBP USD? We'd expect them to trade down, hit the ICT bullish order block, and then start pushing up. Where would they where would we expect them to trade up into? Our very first target would be the low of this candle, which is 3095, 1.3095. Why would this candle be our first target? Because it's an ICT bearish order block. What would we expect at a daily ICT bearish order block? Some level of weakness or resistance, correct? So we would scale some of our profit off as soon as we got to this level. Now if it continues above this high, this high, this high, and this high, we'll have an additional portion of our trade on for that. So we'll scale 75, 80, 90%, whatever you're comfortable taking off here. I would recommend more than 50% of your trade. You take that off here and then you let the remaining portion stay on to clear out the liquidity above the market. Because we don't know if they're going to stop here or not. But because it would make sense for them to stop here, we're going to take off a portion of our trade. That way we still get paid. Because if we didn't take off a portion of our trade and they come all the way back down here, we're not getting paid anymore. That's why I always take partial profits. So going into the week, we want to see GBP USD trade down into uh, anywhere is from 29 big figure down to 29.20. Now the level I have on my chart is 29.10. So it's a it's, it's a nice midpoint between 29.20 and 29 big figure. That's why I've selected that. And it's also the open of this big body down candle. So that's, uh, that's the level I'm using, uh, 29.10 again. So I'd like to see some level of support come in around the 29.10 to 29.20 level. Um, now at absolute lowest, we could trade down to the 50% level. So um, for, for those of you guys that may be thinking that, uh, you are correct. So let's mark that level out now because we we do want to make sure that we have all appropriate support levels on our chart that the market could likely trade down into for the week. So the 50% level, and all I did here for those of you guys that may be confused, I took my fib and I drew it. So I'll do it one more time. Take my fib, draw it from the, the body, the, the lowest body portion of the candle to the highest body portion of the candle there. And then you got the 50% level, which comes in at 28,593. So then I'll just adjust this 28593, copy it, and then I will put it here. And then what I do is I'll change this to a dotted line. So I know it's the 50% level and then I'll just remove my fit. So now I've got the 50% level on here. So I know if the market comes down to this level or it closes below it on a daily basis, then obviously short term bullishness would be out of the picture. Okay, and at that point, I would look for a run on the liquidity below here and even maybe back below 2650. I don't see that being the case yet uh, because, again, we, we still are above this level. So as long as we remain above the 50% uh, the level of this down candle, in terms of bullishness, everything would still be in place and we would expect higher prices uh, pushing up to the 31 big figure. Uh, so that's what you want to have. These are the levels you want to have on your chart for GBP USD and the levels you want to be watching for this week. Um, but I do think that we will get continued strength on this pair here. Um, and uh, and these are the levels I'm watching for because of that. So let's look at Euro GBP now, which is uh, basically the currency pair that makes up these two. Uh, and we've seen a beautiful uh, delivery of price. So we didn't quite get all the way back up to the ICT bearish order block. Uh, we did, however, come back and clear out this high here with a nice bullish move. Uh, and after we cleared out all the liquidity above here and back here, all that stuff, uh, we had a nice sell-off uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And look at where we sold off into. So previous ICT bullish order block that we had mentioned, we got the high and the open marked out. As you can see, the market trades right down into the high and doesn't close below it or anything like that, but just forms a wick and pushes right back up. So uh, very nice to see in terms of price delivery. And I think uh, with, that, with, with looking at this currency pair here, two things are either gonna happen. We're gonna see support and we're gonna see strength from here, or we're gonna see a consolidation. So if this pair just goes back into consolidation, we can expect uh, GBP USD and EURUSD both 
to move in sync with the dollar index. Uh, so based on our analysis with dollar index, we're expecting weakness. So looking at Euro USD and GBP USD, uh, we will be expecting strength with those two if this pair here sits in consolidation. Now, if this pair starts to find support at the ICT bullish order block that it traded within, and we start trading higher, at that point, it's gonna, it's gonna be a better opportunity to buy Euro dollar and more than likely just sit on the sidelines for GBP USD, kind of like we, we have been. Well, we took a, a, like a trade or two last week on it, but in terms of the better, high, more high probability setup, if this pair here, Euro GBP, continues pushing higher, then Euro USD would be the better buy, in my opinion. So that's what we're going to look for. Um, that's basically what we're going to look for if we see um, you know, continued strength on this pair here. So uh, if that does happen, focus your attention to Euro USD. All right, so dollar yen. Um, I like to go over these pairs during the weekly technicals with you guys because I don't primarily look at them too much throughout the week. So uh, in, in terms of the pairs I'm talking about here, I'm, I'm mentioning dollar yen, dollar cad, uh, Australian dollar, and also New Zealand dollar. I don't really look at those pairs at all throughout the week. Uh, I do like to go over them in the weekly technicals with you guys like this because it's it's good practice for you guys uh, if you do watch these pairs and again also you know it helps me um, you know just get more fluent in more pairs um, so while I may not trade all the pairs I still like to do my analysis because it'll give me a clear more in-depth look into price action so that that's pretty much like why I like to do this um, and I figured like for those of you that may trade those four pairs um, or one of the four pairs you know, me doing this analysis may help you guys out. So um, I also like to do it for that reason. So looking at dollar yen, though, in terms of, you know, high probability setups or anything like that, I do not like this pair right now. Uh, it's just stuck in this consolidation, and I'd like to see a better price action from it, in my personal opinion. And this pair here doesn't follow in sync too much with what dollar index does. It kind of does its own thing. Um, so with that being said, I think that the, mo the the best opportunity for them would be to take it back above 112.20, which is the level I've been mentioning for a while. And it's been trying to get up there, and we've been forming higher highs and such, but we have not really shown any willingness to continue, right? We, we push up there, and, and so for example, with this candle, we push up, we make a higher high, and then we reject trade back into a bullish order block so that's understandable then we make another higher high and then we reject and get all the way back below the the two up candles so I, I don't like that and this is typical price action for for when we're in a consolidation so uh, really two levels I'm looking for in this pair 112.20 is my upside objective and my downside objective is 109.80 so we're gonna put that level on our chart now so basically uh, I'm 50% on both, so I, I don't necessarily think it's bullish or bearish. Um, in my opinion, it looks more bullish than bearish. But uh, again, when I when I don't have a clear read, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actively put money in the charts, you know, trying to trade it. So uh, I, I would not particularly look to uh, trade this pair right now. But if it is something that you can clearly read and and you prefer this pair. Uh, then these are the levels I'd be looking for. So you want to be looking for a run below this low for weakness and a run below above this high for strength. And, and that's pretty much all I would look at at this point because there's nothing else clear for me to work in. This is just the range that we're within. So I can, I can pretty much justify reasons for why they would want to go lower and justify reasons for why they would want to go higher. So anytime I have a read like that on the market, I just, I'd, I'd prefer to stay out and not waste, uh, you know, really waste my time going back in there trying to, you know, like keep making up for for setups that aren't even that high probability. When I can go over and look at, you know, my favorite pairs, which are Euro USD and GBP USD, and I see much more uh, potential with those two in terms of current price action. So with this pair, again, be 
be cautious, but we do have an ICT bearish order block that was formed. These up candles with this big down move confirmed it as an ICT bearish order block. So we could just poke our head in this and then and start selling off and, and shoot for the liquidity below 109.80. Uh, but again, we are within this up this down candle before this up move, which is an ICT bullish order block. Uh, and as you can see, we traded into that, so we could very well take price above here. And that's pretty much why I'm like on the fence by this pair, and I, I don't really want to like be trading it because I can justify reasons for for both sides of the market. Um, so yeah, uh, whatever you guys may see though, if you see something that I don't see, post it in the Facebook group. I'd love to check it out and analyze it for you um, or give you my feedback on it. But um, from the looks of it right now, I think this pair is still stuck in a consolidation, which does mean big moves are coming. Uh, we just have to wait for the consolidation to get broken first um, for the highest probability moves. So uh, that's how I'm looking at that. Uh, we'll talk about dollar CAD and then we'll go back to Australian dollar and uh, New Zealand dollar. So looking at this pair, kind of similar scenario. Um, we do have clear bearish price action in my opinion though because we've got a high, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Uh, this could very well be a lower high point and then we start selling off again um, it, My only thing is we've we've come deep back within this ICT bearish order block So I would have liked to see them stay, you know relative uh, at least keep the body of the candle below the low um, But with the body so deep in this candle I don't particularly like that as much um, now if we draw our fib on this candle yeah, you can pretty much see that we, we came real close to closing below the 50% level, but we closed just above it. And uh, and sometimes they can do that. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise, but it, it is a lot. I have a lot more confidence if they were to close below it. Uh, let me just put it that way. So with this pair, again, kind of like dollar yen, I, I want to stick away from it um, until I get a clear read on price. Uh, but if I had to guess, I would say that they're going to take it b lower um, in reference to what the dollar index is doing as well. So we have this low here, which comes in at 129 big figure. So we can put that level on our chart. Um, but that's the next downside objective for this. I, I do believe that we will continue trading lower. Uh, just not sure when they will decide to do that because this pair can stick in a consolidation for a bit. It doesn't have to move just because the other pairs are moving. Um, and that goes for any pair, not just this pair specifically. So uh, this, is, this is the next level I'd be looking for. I had this level previously drawn out at 29, um, 29.65, which was previous support. So you can see the market found support, traded up. Then we traded below that. So I was thinking it should act as resistance. Uh, and then again, again, we did get back above that and we traded back with the body of the candle within this ICT bear shorter block. So don't particularly like that as much, um, but I do still think we, we will remain bearish on this pair and should see weaker prices uh, up until the point that we do get back above this high. Now, if we do get back above this high, eh, we, have, we have to consider some, some short-term bullishness in my opinion. So um, that's really all I have for dollar CAD. I don't have too much to talk about with that. Um, Australian dollar, this pair here. Uh, so um, if we're being honest here, I did not expect a another significant round of selling in Australian dollar like this. Um, I honestly would have preferred to see them start trading above all this liquidity above here, which and they still can. I, this just confirms more of a bearish market structure in terms of a daily basis. Because if you look, we've got a high, low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Um, so lower high, lower low. Uh, but within that, we've got a high, low, lower high, lower low. So basically how I'm looking at it is, while I am bearish on dollar index, the, you know, again, I, trading this and trading Euro and GBP, I have a much, much, much clearer read on Euro and GBP because I am, I watch them on a day-by-day -day basis so I can pretty much tell what they're going to do. Now these pairs, I don't watch them on a day by day basis. I, I, on a day by day basis. I pretty much walk, watch them on like a weekly basis. So I don't see the same clarity that I do see with the other pairs. 
So with this, I'm, I'm anticipating a, you know, while they could remain bullish, and this could just be a stop run, so they could just be pushing the, uh, you know, taking anybody out and then shooting this up aggressively. But looking at the candles, you could see that this candle closed heavily bearish. So I'm anticipating a potential retracement into this ICT bearish order block, and I want to see if we get any selling there. So are we going to find resistance and get more selling there? If that's the case, we have to assume that uh, Australian dollar could be a, a you know a little longer term bearish uh, based on the current price action. If that's the case, so um, only if we do trade back up into this level and find resistance. Now, if we trade through it and we just start pushing up aggressively and take out this high, well, obviously at that point we would know that this is just a stop run and they were clearing out any last liquidity below the market and they're likely going to push this thing higher. Okay, so the levels I'd be watching for is this candle's low this candle's low which comes in at 72 Sorry guys, I got the hiccups. 72.38. And we're going to make that red because it's resistance. Cool. All right, so that's the level we would expect them to trade up into and find resistance. Now, let's mark out the 50% level. So we're going to do the body of that candle, the body of that candle. And the 50% level comes out at 72.97. So we're going to make a copy of this. And we're going to align this with 72.97. All right. And we need to make this a dotted line so we can tell the difference. All right, there we go. So if we get back above 7297, then obviously at that point we have to assume higher prices and we're going to look for a run on liquidity above here, here, and then all the liquidity above the uh, 7450 area up here. Okay? So let's move on to the last pair of the morning, which is New Zealand dollar. Uh, now looking at this pair, a little bit more interesting, because if we compare the two and we look at it side by side, um, and sorry if you guys can hear my cat in the background, he's like scratching his uh, <laughs> cat scratcher. So, okay, looking at, wait, this is not, Okay, now looking at NZD, USD, and Australian dollar, look at what we've got here. So market traded lower while Australian dollar is trading lower. We pushed back up on Australian dollar, failed to make a higher high. On New Zealand dollar, we did make a higher high, and then we rejected. So you can see that this was just a clear stop run, just to push above the high into the ICT bearish order block, found resistance, and then we broke lower trading below this low. Now this down candle is technically an ICT bearish order block because we do have these two down candles before this up move uh, and the high comes in at 66.10 and that could act as potential support so you can already see that we've traded into that uh, wicked back wicked off of it a bit and, and closed a bit higher off that specific level but Again, same goes for this pair, kind of like over here in Australian dollar. It looks a bit more bearish. Um, now, this one in particular to Australian dollar does not look as bearish because we've got a lower low that formed here. We do not have a lower low that formed lower than this previous low back here. We've just got a lower low form between these two candles, which is fine uh, while we trade it back into a potential near-term support. So. I'd like to see if this level holds us support, and if we do hold support here, uh, anticipate a run back above the 67.20, and uh, a little bit longer term above these equal highs at the 68.50 level. Uh, and that's really all I'm going to be looking at. Um, and you guys know primarily the only two I'm going to be watching are Euro Dollar and GBP USD. But as far as my analysis goes, that's pretty much how I would expect everything, and and kind of how I see the markets for where they're at right now. Um, I do think we're going to be going into a great time ahead uh, in terms of the fall season. So we're in September now. We've got a new month. Um, you know, next week and the following weeks, I think will be much better because we do have NFP and things like that this week. 
but um, in a bank holiday and stuff like that on Monday. Uh, however, I still think there will be plenty of opportunity for us. They just may not be as um, longer term. So, for example, you know, I, primarily I just like to day trade anyway. So I'm just looking for 30, 40 pips a day. If I could do that, I'm happy. Uh, once or twice a week, again, I'm, I'm super happy. Uh, but if you know, if the market's trending and we're getting big, massive moves, we can catch, kind of like you've seen the past two weeks, we can catch a lot more pips, like 100, 150 plus pips in a week, um, if we have the setups that are actually there. So uh, this week isn't as looking as good as the previous two. Again, there's, there still will be plenty of setups for us, and I'll, of course I will call signals um, inside of the group. Uh, we just have to you know, consider the fact that we've got NFP and a bank holiday. So those are a few things that make the week a little less exciting than other weeks. Um, but nonetheless, going ahead into the fall, I think we're, we're looking at some great moves that are going to be uh, unfolding in the markets. And generally, the fall and the spring are the best times of the year to trade. So um, you guys will actually see that come to effect during these fall months. Um, as long as you remain active and still participate in the group, you will obviously see everything come to fruition um, if you've been with me for a while now pretty much since like March April when we got started um, you've seen the significance in price action that we had early on you've seen it kind of die down a bit throughout the summer months and then now you'll be able to see it pick back up uh, in the fall months so it's really good practice and really good education for you guys to follow along especially week by week as I do these um, so you can really learn and actually develop as a trader because watching me do it on a weekly and even a daily basis for those of you that do participate in the daily sessions inside of the group, you learn so much by hearing me repeat and repeat and repeat the same things. As you look at the charts on your own, you'll start to formulate your own ideas and you'll be able to trade on your own as well. Uh, and that's pretty much my whole goal, right? I don't want to, I don't want everyone to have to rely on signals for the rest of their life. I mean, of course, like, I'll give them uh, out as long as you know, as long as it doesn't really cause a problem for me. And, and so far, it hasn't. It's you know very easy for me to just to send over the trades that I'm going to take. Uh, but at some point, you know, I do want you guys to you know develop as traders on your own. And that's why I do these live sessions because I really want you to understand the context of why I call the signals and where I call the signals. You know, when you see me call the signal, go look at the weekly technicals and figure out why did I call the signal there wasn't one of the levels we talked about you know things like that so you really want to you know and that's how you'll learn as quick as possible and you'll be you know become a better trader much faster than others because I can guarantee you you know if you do those things that I just mentioned 95 percent of the other people whether that's in the group or just traders in general will not do that same work which will mean you will shine a lot quicker than they will because you're willing to do the work so you know, really think about that because for those of you that are participating, and trust me, I see the, the ones of you that are participating every day and every week, and you will go a lot farther by continuing to do that, but also implementing the things I talk about. So that doesn't mean just trading all the time. You don't have to go and trade and take every signal I call. That's That's completely up to your discretion, but what you should by all means do is every weekly and every daily technicals that you watch go in put those levels on your charts and look and study what price did at those levels I talked about and why it happened and also what time did it happen those are key things to learn about so that is it for the weekly technicals portion guys I am going to stop the recording here grab a sip of water and then I will uh, answer your questions in just a second 